What factors affect the survival of wild animals? What difference does it make to you if these animals survive or not? In order to save our remaining wild animals, scientists are studying their behavior, their diseases, and their eating habits. We need to learn how each species fits into the balance of nature, because when one species is gone, it affects the survival of others. One animal being studied is the Cape Buffalo. The Cape Buffalo can weigh a ton, as much as a car, yet they are very agile. Their horns are dangerous, and when they are wounded, they will attack men or lions. If you were a scientist, what methods would you use to study this dangerous animal? Let's join a research team studying the Cape Buffalo in East Africa. This is Dr. Tony Sinclair, head of the team. We'll follow him on a trip into Cape Buffalo country and learn what methods he uses to study this animal. On each side, then the, the, then the people are, are, are holding against each other. Um, and anybody working near the, the horns must stand right um, to one side at the back. Um, the first thing and the most important thing of this operation is to put the collar on. Um, and uh, this is because the idea is to follow the, the herd around um, and identify it by the marked animals with the collar on. They're very white uh, and can be seen from the air by aircraft, um, which is a useful thing because the herds are so large you'd never pick out one or two marked animals from the ground. The other things we want to do are measure it, um, look at its teeth for aging and take ticks off, collect blood and take blood slides for looking at parasites. The dart we use is made by Palmer's. Um, it's a very efficient dart in that it's able to inject all the uh, drug that we put in so we know exactly how much goes in and this is very important with this sort of operation. I had to go up yesterday in the plane to find this herd. It covers a potential 300 square miles, this herd's range, and uh, could take us all day looking for it by vehicle. And um, in order to save time, uh, we'd spot it from the air first. It's a big herd, ranging between 500 and 800 animals. There's the herd over there. What I want to do today is to go in um, to this herd, cut it off from the river, and then drive right in amongst the animals and, and fire a dart into a female. And then we'll follow that one and um, immobilize it and mark it and release it. At the moment we can't see very much because of all the dust. The female we got was the one with the broken horn. That's it. Now that's the female. I think you can probably see the dart as well. Um, the, the, the females coming under the dose, coming under the drug, and dropping back, going round in circles. Notice that the gait's getting more laboured. N99 is, is an anaesthetic and can knock the animal out and put it under general anaesthetic. Very humane drug for this sort of purpose. Uh, the back legs are getting very, very weak. She's staggering a bit, tripping over herself. Um, still. Very strong, though, these animals, and, and keeping going for a long time. Um, the, the, hind leg go, the hind legs go first, and then it gradually sinks to the ground. When it's down, we give her a few more minutes so that she gets completely underneath, under the influence of the drug. Uh, we've got to take out that dart immediately. Uh, first thing we do is then we'll get this collar on. Um, I think she's been down long enough now. We'll have to do it onto that. Uh, first thing we'll do is go and one, put the collar on. Onto that piece of chain, okay? Right. Somebody's got to hold onto one horn and hold the head down sideways, turn sideways. And whoever put the collar on must do it from the back. Otherwise it could quite easily get caught by the swing of the head. Even though they're um, immobilized, they can still swing their head and their horns around. 
How long do you reckon this thing will stay on for? I hope that with these new improved joints, the best thing, of course, would be padlocks, but it's too expensive. Well, okay. How's that? Fine. Stand on there. You're not in the best position. Take over my position. Now, this is where she can kick. She can throw her head up, but she doesn't like it. Um, then, then we'll take measurements, look at the teeth, and take blood from the ear veins. Um, most animals, you can take blood from the jugular, but the skin of these animals is so thick that you can't even see where the jugular is, let alone penetrate the skin and get, get into it. So we have to take the blood out of the, out of the uh, veins of the ear and take blood slides, collect ticks. Breathing she is line. breathing. Um, I j just want to look at the teeth. It's perfectly satisfactory anaesthetic, general anaesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, we put the animal onto its brisket so that um, it can regurgitate in normal ruminal movements. Teeth are about half worn. It's a medium aged animal. Very big. About 1,200, 1,300 pounds. Um, I'm going to now inject this um, antidote for the M99. It's also, it knocks out the M99 and the animal wakes up again. Should be about seven minutes to get her. This uh, antidote um, works in about seven minutes. Some time ago. fully aware of us yet. <laughs> Just about seven minutes now. There we are. Well done. Um, the animal gets up and just walks away. Still um, under the influence of the tranquilizer, which is also injected, astalpramazine. This goes on for several hours, but it's, it's perfectly capable of walking and eating and drinking. So far, we haven't lost any animals marked. For the next several weeks, Dr. Sinclair will observe the behavior of this female in the herd. Does she change herds? What does she eat? He will study her blood sample. What kinds of diseases does she carry? Scientists like Dr. Sinclair have the challenge of suggesting ways to save our wild animals. The actions of scientists the governments and the people of the world will determine which of our wild animals will survive. <laughs>